What's up, Internet world, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I bring you the 2022 Range Rover Evoque. This design is so popular with the ladies that in 2014, a Chinese company named Landwind basically copied the exact Evoque shape. And then they went to court and then they lost. You see, Land Rover was pissed. They were like, how can you copy a design that's so popular from us? Bring it out there and charge one third of the price and then go to court in China and think you're gonna win. But then four years later they did and they did win. They actually stopped a company from producing the exact replica to this Evoque. But back to North American soil, you can get two engine variants. Both are coupled with a nine-speed transmission. One makes 246 horsepower and the other makes 296 horsepower attached with a 48 volt hybrid that makes a whopping 103 pound-feet of torque. Yes, they are both four-cylinder, two-liter turbo motors. So in the Range Rover Evoque, ready to evoke my senses. Zero to 60 in seven seconds. The feeling in this thing feels pretty good. It feels pretty premium, even though it is the base Evoque. I mean, not exactly base, but it handles pretty well. It's not exactly the base Evoque, but it's the basest Range Rover you can buy. What does that feel like? What does that drive like? Well, for starters, I've got this really annoying creak that happens over here, kind of like that Stinger we had last year. It's the only car I remember the creaking, and it was like in my ear and it's right here. Give it to a dealer, maybe they'll fix it. But quality feels really and looks very prestigious and clean and nice and Range Rover-ish, so I'm, I'm feeling that vibe. Outside looks great in the front, great in the back, middle's funny. Power, let me show you again. Delay, let's stop there. The start and stop system is poor. When I come to a stop sign, it shuts off. I put my foot on the gas again. It takes about a second to start up. Annoying. Performance. It's decent. Could use the more bigger, powerful engine, but it's fine for what it is. I think if you're not a speed freak and you're just zipping around town, it's plenty. I wouldn't really complain about that. But I will say, people will buy it because of the height. You sit pretty high in here. You feel sort of above the road. You don't sit low at all. You sit high and you sort of sit refined and sit just like a Range Rover would. You know, posh and luxurious. So because of its short wheelbase, this is one of its best attributes and that's handling. This thing handles very well. The suspension is nice and firm. Brakes are good. No complaints there, as I said but the steering is good. Now in the front, it does have a Velar-esque design because it's pretty much, as I mentioned, exactly the same, but it does check the box that a car in front of you will look in their rearview mirror and realize, this is a Range Rover? Because you can't tell the difference unless, of course, you look at the side. But regardless, it does have the signature DRLs and they're nice and pretty. It does have this nice black grill and the Range Rover in black, along with the radar hidden right here. I think they should center it, but that's just my opinion. Now moving on the side here, this is called Carpathian Gray. Now my favorite color in Range Rovers are black, but it does have some black accents, including these 20 inch wheels. And behind that you have nice red brake calipers in this bronze edition. Now it does have a color right here and you're probably wondering what color that is. Well, that is Corinthian bronze and it does follow this piece. You see, this is a selling point 
As a marketer, as a person, as a sales guy, you can say, hey, I got something different. And that is what somebody wants when they buy this Range Rover Evoque, as you will see. Now on the side here, it does have these flush handles that go inside when you lock the car. And of course, this really shortened wheelbase at 105 inches. That is ultra short. Nothing is shorter in the SUV market than this. Yes, this is way smaller than pretty much all its competitors. Subcompact class, here we go. On a personal note, my favorite looking Range Rover is really the Velar in current standards. Now they have the new Range Rover that's been dropped, but I still like the way the Velar looks. This is pretty much exactly the same in the front and in the back of Velar, except smaller. So if that's what you're looking for, this should be a consideration. The back of the Range Rover Evoque follows the front. It's nice and pretty and nice and money. You see, on the back, you have all the black that follows through with this nice big Range Rover badge telling you, hey, I'm driving a Range Rover. Even this Evoque is nice and black. Look at this massive rear diffuser. This is a little subcompact SUV. They're really trying to pump it up. And they've done some unique pieces. They've hidden the rear wiper underneath here so it's out of the way. They've continued this rose gold, AKA bronze, and my personal favorite, a rear view mirror camera that is actually mounted right there. Now, as I press the key fob for the power lift gate to go up, you would like to know that this does tow 4,000 pounds which is a big number when you consider how small this vehicle is. An Audi Q5 tows that. And as far as space, yes, it is obviously small. It has a 32 inch depth and has a 39 inch width. So you can't fit that much, maybe three suitcases at the most. Back seat of the Range Rover Evoque. Now, it is a small vehicle, so of course everything is gonna be small. You add the fact that everything is black, it'll feel a little bit claustrophobic back here, but everything appears to have really good quality. The seats are nice, they feel well. The door panel is not just plain and plastic. There's a lot of cuts, a lot of modern pieces actually. If you take a look, there's this piano black that flows all the way through. Not a big fan of piano black, but it's not done where your hands actually touch it. It's just really for appearance. It has a nice little cutout where your hands fit in to hold the door in case you're driving like a maniac. As far as convenience go, you do have a sunroof back here. It's not one big glass panel. There is a structural brace that goes across the top, which is sort of a little bit disappointing. In a vehicle like this, it should have one big glass panel. It also doesn't have a USB or USB-C back here. It does have a cigarette plug and it does have heated seats on either side. You'd think in a 2022, it would have USBs. Hmm, but you do have two cup holders. I guess that's a plus. Front seat of the Range Rover Evoque. Luxury at its finest. It does have a split armrest so I can slide each one for me. A lot of brands don't have a split armrest and a lot of brands stuck with this elbow that's actually hitting absolutely nothing or the cup holders. But it's a Range Rover, so I do have a nice individual piece. I don't have an armrest here for my arm, but I have one very close right there. Now, inside feels very Velarish, nice quality materials. They even thought about wireless charging. Yeah, no USBs in the back, but there's wireless charging. And it's for either side because it's actually hidden underneath the center console right here where my hand is. Hello. Now stepping in the vehicle, you have the sill that says Range Rover right on it. And when you get in, you have more Range Rover-esque pieces. You've got three digital screens, the driver's display and two center displays, including this HVAC control over here that shows you the Evoque. Not the right color, but they're trying. It does have a nice big heads up display that is also color. So a lot of digital pieces. And of course my favorite, this rear view mirror camera. Everything just seems very easy and very clean. This interior is very, very nice and it doesn't feel like the most expensive slash inexpensive Range Rover. And if digital is not your thing and virtual is not your space and you want something a bit more tangible, well, you have these nice big paddle shifters and they are real, they are not plastic. You have these HVAC controls that are soft turn and very easy, giving you that luxury feel. And if the screen isn't angled to your liking, well, you simply just press a button and it'll tilt the exact way that you would like. And if you are wondering where the USB and USB-C is, well, it is clearly hiding underneath here. It's got a deep enough pocket that you can fit some stuff in. Not huge, but again, nothing in this vehicle is huge. You do have a USB, as I mentioned, USB-C, and of course a cigarette plug light there. So you kind of have everything you actually need, including two memory seats, and of course, keep you in your lane, heads up display, and a heated front windshield. 
So on the lower screen here is where you have your HVAC controls and some vehicle settings. Pretty straightforward stuff. You have your climate, your seat heat, and of course your vehicle. In order to change the climate, pretty straightforward stuff. You have your left and your right, and of course your sync button. But the important piece here is your front heated windscreen. That is very unique to Range Rover. So next up is seat heat. And in order to activate it, you can use these little rotary buttons to activate it, or you can simply just press this on button and then you can touch if you wanna have it in the back. So that is cool. In this level of car, it's hard to have one that does just your back. You see, most of them just do your butt or just do the back, one or the other. But in this case, you can do both on either side. That is pretty cool. All right, it's like a video game here. Next up is vehicle, and this is where you have all your different drive modes. So if I start at the left here, I have different dynamic programs selected. I have eco, comfort, grass, gravel, snow, mud ruts, and of course, cactus, and then auto. A strange piece here is if you look at all these buttons here, they should really be on this side, especially auto hold. I'm gonna hit auto hold pretty consistently because I like auto hold and I use it all the time. Very easy to use. You come to a stop sign, press the brake, and the car will stay there. And then I have to hit the gas to move the car forward. As far as the upper screen goes, this does have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, but again, it's very clean. We've done this pretty in depth in the discovery video, but you have your navigation, your phone, your media. And these are sort of your quick buttons that they also have in the Mercedes-Benz MBUX. Very easy to read and very clean. So no complaints here. The only complaint I would have is sometimes there's a bit of a delay when it comes to Range Rover, Land Rover products, but they seem to have cleaned it up a little bit with this model. I am not the buyer of this car and everybody that I've seen drive this loves it because it's small, cute, and there's just not many offerings that have this luxury feel. Because what is small, short, and cute? Maybe a Jeep. Maybe a Bronco. Maybe an Isuzu Rodeo or Isuzu Trooper from like 1995. Short wheelbase. There's not much available that's short and cute. Except this little thing. So. Someone's gonna look at this thing and love it because the outside looks like a Velar, the inside feels posh and premium, and it's priced pretty good for what it is. So I'll wrap up this video with all the things I talked about from the start to the finish by clearly saying that the outside looks like a baby Velar, the inside also looks like a Velar, and it feels premium for the budget. Because everybody that's looking to buy this car will only look at those two things, the inside and the outside. They probably won't even care about the drive. So. Maybe you got this far in the video. No idea. Thanks for watching. See ya.